Hi fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I am here with a massive, massive book haul for you. I found a library sale in a neighboring town and this was not the kind of library sale where the library had a bunch of old books that it wanted to give away, no. This was the kind of library sale where the town and people from neighboring towns donated their books and the library hosted this sale and all of the proceeds go to supporting the local library. So this is a great way to spend your money. All the books were super, super cheap. I love experiences where I get to go support my local libraries and find some delightful old books and give them a brand new home. So I have 24 books for you guys today and all of those were only $15, which is pretty insane. The prices were amazing, and I found some really, really great finds, if I do say so myself. So I'm going to start with classics, go into short stories, and then I have some contemporary fiction for you. Now, I don't know how much I'm going to talk about each book, because this video, it could take forever if I talk too much about each book, but um, hopefully it won't be too, too long, and we'll give it a shot. So the first book I have to show you guys is one that I am most excited for, and that is The Juvenalia of Jane Austen and Charlotte Bronte. This book, where do I start? I have not read The Juvenalia of Jane Austen or of Charlotte Bronte, but I've read a lot of both of their works, and they are two of my favorite authors of all time. So I am excited to read their Juvenalia. I know that this collection has some angriest stories by Charlotte Bronte, as well as some of Jane Austen's most popular um, Juvenalia, like Lady Cassandra and Love and Friendship. But I think it also has some lesser known childhood fiction of hers, so I'm really excited to read this. And most interestingly, this came with a little sticker. It says, bought at Jane Austen's house in Chawton, Hampshire. And I mean, was this book really bought there? Because if so, that is so exciting because I've never gotten a chance to go there. I don't know when I will. Um, you know, traveling abroad is kind of expensive. And yeah, so it's almost like I kind of got to go to Jane Austen's house in the form of this book. Um, I don't know why the sticker isn't actually on the book. And I've been debating putting it there let me know what you think. I, I don't know. Is it better if I just keep it on the side? I don't know. Anyway, the next book is Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott. This is a book that I have never read before, but it is super old, both the book itself and the work, obviously. Um, sort of a medieval knight story if you're not familiar, and it's the kind of work that has informed a lot of authors that I read and I think it's something they'd be really familiar with so I'd love to read it. The next one is Madame Bovary and this is a book that I have not read that so many people have recommended to me and I don't know much about French fiction so I feel like this would be a great place to start and a lot of people have said this is you know a good place to start with familiarizing myself with French fiction. Next I have two Dickens books this one is Barnaby Rudge, which is one of his, I feel like, lesser known works. I even don't know much about it, um, but I am hoping to read all of Dickens in my lifetime, so gotta own all of the copies um, if I want to read all of them. Another Dickens that I picked up is David Copperfield. Now I don't have a nice little copy of it that I can bring around and read with me, so this fulfills that need. And I didn't realize until I opened it up and was taking a look at it, but it has an inscription, and you guys know how I love annotations and inscriptions. It doesn't really have annotations, but the front cover is is all marked up and it's a little inscription for somebody. Um, I'll read it to you because I, you know, I love this stuff. So it says, it's dated April 23rd, 1992. Dear Susan, you have a true soulmate to me. Oh, you have a true soulmate to me? You have been a true soulmate to me? There's no bid. Anyway, you have a true soulmate to me over these past eight years and like the Agnes of this story will always have a secure place in my heart as the sister I always wished for, and as more than a sister too. 
maybe you can begin to read this during internship in Hawaii. It's almost a thousand pages, so perhaps you'll finish it just as we are reunited in Boston. Love always. ML? Email? Something with an E. So I think that's really cute. Obviously their relationship didn't work out too well if it is now in my hands, but um, yeah, I always like books with a little history like that. The next book I have is The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy, and I'm interested in reading more of Thomas Hardy. I have read Jude the Obscure, but I have The Woodlanders and Far From a Madding Crowd sitting on the shelves behind me, so I'll have to pick those up at some point, as well as this one, which is another I really, really wanted to read by him. Next, we have Edith Wharton's The Buccaneers. I have not read anything by Edith Wharton, but I'd like to. Um, I know she's not really a Victorian author at all, and I know most of this classics collection is Victorian, but the back really intrigued me, and I know that it has been made into a TV series or BBC adaptation of some sort, um, so I thought I'd like to give it a try. Next, I have two Trollope books for you. The first one is a standalone book, and that is The Way We Live Now um, by Anthony Trollope. And this one comes highly, highly recommended by Katie from Books and Things, and I would love to read a standalone book by Anthony Trollope because I'm, you know, kind of working my way through the Barsetshire Chronicles series, and it's, you know, it's a long series, it's slow going, and I love Trollope's writing, so why not read something a little more standalone-ish? Speaking of the Barsetshire Chronicles series, I have the third book in the series, Dr. Thorne. I read The Warden on audiobook, I read Barchester Towers on audiobook, and I'm thinking that audiobook is not doing it for me with his work. I would like to read a hard copy, and here is a hard copy of Dr. Thorne for me, so perhaps I will read this during Victober. I don't know. I am very excited for Victober. I will have to post a TBR at some point. I have a lot of Victorian books in this pile, and a lot of Victorian books behind me that are still unread, so I'll have to come up with which ones I am dying to read in October and which ones I can save for the rest of the year. So, as I said, lots of classics, but there are also lots of contemporary books in my stack here. I have three short story collections, the first of which is A Manual for Cleaning Women by Lucia Berlin, and this book sounded really really interesting from the back. It seems like it's about uncovering little moments of grace and solitude and in very ordinary lives. Um, so it discusses laundromats and halfway houses. It talks about switchboard operators and struggling mothers and hitchhikers and bad Christians. So sounds really interesting. I'm always looking for simplicity and beauty in the ordinary. The next short story collection is kind of for my boyfriend and a little less for me, but if he likes it, I think I should read it too. It is The Tsar of Love and Techno, so it's short stories about Russia, and I think the Soviet Union in general. He was a Russian major, well, double Russian major and poli-sci major, so I thought he'd find this book very interesting when I read the back. I kind of handed it to him, and he's like, yeah, let's get that one. So we did, and maybe I'll read it too, we'll see. The next book comes recommended by Stephanie from That's What She Read. I saw it on her channel and she just raved about it. It is Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows. Um, if that title doesn't grab you, I, I really don't know what will. Um, so it sounds like it deals with issues of religion, feminism, um, and a culture that I don't know too much about. So very excited. And now we're moving on to the contemporary fiction. So the first one I have is an oldie but a goodie. It's one of my favorite books, maybe of all time, and that is Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. If you don't know, this is a delightful historical fiction about a 16-year-old girl and her relationship with Vermeer, the famous painter. So it's historical fiction, so it's it's fiction, but I mean Vermeer was a real person and this painting is a real painting by him and it's a fascinating, fascinating book. I think it was turned into a movie with like Scarlett Johansson in it or something, but um, re read the book. Don't, don't worry about the movie. I don't know. Maybe the movie's good. I haven't even watched it, but the book is amazing. The next one was kind of an impulse buy. I read the back of it. 
and I thought it was really interesting because it was about writing and books about reading and books about writing are books that I usually love. So this one is The Imperfectionists by Tom Rackman and it's about people who are journalists and sort of their lives and how they interconnect with their journalistic stories and that just sounds fascinating. So yes. Plus, Imperfectionists is a really good title for a novel, I think. And then I have a book that comes highly recommended by a subscriber, and that is The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. It's a book I haven't read yet, and it was recommended to me a while ago, but now that I actually have a hard copy, maybe I will get around to reading it. We'll see. Next is an author that I'm interested in getting a little more into. I don't know too much about her. Um, and that is Barbara Kingsolver, and she's very famous. I don't know why I've never read anything by her. Um, this is The Bean Trees, and I'd love to know from you guys, is this a good place to start? Can you think of a better place to start? Is this at least not a bad place to start? Um, because if it's a bad place to start, maybe I should uh, rethink my decision to read this one. Yeah. And then I have The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. I love Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I was actually looking for The Edible Woman as well, but I couldn't find it at the book sale. But this book is supposed to be a novel within a novel, which, again, I mean, books about books, novels within novels, um, books about writing, all so up my alley. And this one also has a little mystery death murder twist or something. Um, yes, as far as I know. So it seems perfect for you know, the fall. I like reading murder and mystery and things like that in the fall. Speaking of which, the next book I have is by Agatha Christie, and it is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. So September, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but September 15th was Agatha Christie's birthday, and I was this close to filming a video about it, but I did not have the time on the 15th to film and to post, um, my boyfriend had a friend over and it just was not going to happen. I didn't have the time to do the Queen of Mystery justice. So I hope you guys are celebrating Agatha Christie's life and works this month um, for her birthday. I've been reading The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie and of course I have previously read Murder on the Orient Express, which I think they're making a movie out of soon, so all very exciting stuff perfect time of the year for mysteries, you guys, so hope you pick some good mysteries up. The next book is a book that I have read um, and owned many copies of. I keep giving away my copies of this book, and that is The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. Uh, I feel like this book is perfect for anyone who loves reading. If you love reading and if you've read Jane Eyre, this book is for you. So I had a friend who was going through a really rough time in school and I gave her some books about books. I gave her The Air Affair, and I gave her Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookshop. And I have a feeling that I'm not getting those two books back, so I need to purchase them again. So I got The Air Affair again for myself, and I'll, I didn't find Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookshop there, um, but I, I need to get another copy of that for myself. Next, I have a book that breaks my rule about movies and books. Usually I must read the book before I watch the movie adaptation, but there are quite a few books actually that I watch their movie adaptations without realizing that they were books. Um, Gone with the Wind, I actually was very young when I watched it with my parents. Um, it was kind of like an all-day affair, that's one of them, and I still haven't read the book. There's Clueless, which is an adaptation of Emma. It is my favorite adaptation of Emma by, by Jane Austen. And I read Emma after watching Clueless, and now this one, <laughs> High Fidelity by Nick Hornby. Um, I'm fascinated to find out how they get that 80s indie vibe into print, so this should be interesting. The stack is getting really wobbly, you guys. Next we have a book about a book, you could say it's fan fiction of a sort, and that is Geraldine Brooks's March. So this follows Mr. March from the March family of Little Women. Now, we don't hear much about him at war, and this just 
you know, talks a little more about the Civil War and about his time there away from the Little Women that we know and love so well. And next is a book that I saw on Words of a Reader, um, Leslie's channel, and that is Mr. Rosenblum's List or Friendly Guidance for the Aspiring Englishman. And this book is featured in her opening intro. It's one of her favorite books of all time, and so naturally I want to read it. The next book is one that I've already reviewed and absolutely loved when I read it, and I would love to have a copy, so I purchased a copy for myself. And that is Jacqueline Woodson's Another Brooklyn. This book was so poetic and such a poignant portrayal of memory and childhood and I can't highly recommend it enough. Um, I will link my video where I discuss it in a little more detail up above. Um, I can't remember if it's a wrap up or if it's an actual review, but either way, take a look at it because this book is amazing. And last but not least, congratulations for making it to the end of this ridiculously long book haul. I have The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender. This book deals with a girl who can taste other people's emotions in the food they make. And that concept is just intriguing enough for me to pick up a book all on its own. But it reminds me of other books that I've read, um, books like the graphic novel series Chew, and um, where he's a, a crime detective who he, he knows certain things by tasting food, like where it came from or in the case of people who killed them. Yeah, it's kind of gnarly, but it's a really good graphic novel series. And this one also reminds me of Laura Esquivel's uh, Like Chocolate for Water. Like Water for Chocolate? Oh my god. Like Water for Chocolate, um, which is amazing. And that is the end of my very, very lengthy book haul. If you guys are particularly excited about any of these books, if you loved them, if you hated them, I'd love to hear about it. And have you gotten any exciting books lately? Any good library sales by you? Um, if so, I'd love to hear about them. And until next time, I'll see you in another video soon. Bye!